Here are the top three changes that I think Warhammer 40k should make. Number one, more ways to play. Games Workshop thought it was a good idea with open matched narrative play, but in this edition, they suddenly think it's a terrible idea. We have one card deck or two card decks, Prior Nexus, Levite, we got a couple, we match play, there's one way. And all the missions, the way you play that is exactly the same way that you'd go to play an ITC, WGC, GCSC, WWF tournament as well. And then in the main rulebook, apart from the combat patrol stuff, there's one mission. In the other nine editions of Warhammer 40k, Games Workshop thought it was a better idea to put more than one mission in the main rulebook, but suddenly they don't think that's a good idea, and I think that's a bad idea. We need more decks of cards, we need more than one way to play a 2,000 point mission. We got the match play deck, it's nice, I like it. Um, I like playing tournament play and flipping tables and, and playing with baked dice. But we also need an open play deck for those filthy casual players who just want to kill each other or hold objectives at the end of the game. Objectives that are just worth random points. Missions where you can tag on some random elements such as meteorite strikes or low gravity. More casual ways to play which we also include deck number three. Imagine if there was three decks on the go right now. Your match play sweaty thing, your casual play thing and an old school maelstrom of war deck without any primaries whatsoever where you just fight over the secondaries. Number of people I talk to, thousands, who still play with the maelstrom of war decks. I for one look forward to more ways to play. Maybe 11th edition, maybe 11th edition launches with three separate decks. That would be glorious. Number two, universal special rules. This is another one of those ideas that Games Workshop thought was bad and brought back again, sort of. We've got these pages here for weapons, as well as other universal special rules like lone operative, stealth, feel no pain, deadly demise. But what about all those thousands of other rules that are on data sheets and stratagems and things? Like armor of contempt, contemptuous disregard, unflailingly obdurate. All of them reduce incoming attacks by one AP. Then we have the Royal Wardens, adaptive strategy. This model is eligible to shoot and charge in the turn at which it fell back. Tactical doctrine, this eligible, eligible to shoot and charge in the turn it fell back. Shield host, multi-potentiality, able to shoot and charge in the turn it fell back. So many rules with so many different names which do the same thing. Questing tendrils, Vanguard invader units are el eligible to charge in the turn in which they advanced. Orcs, wow. Lots of names for lots of rules that do exactly the same thing, which is why they brought this in for weapons. So what Warhammer 40k needs is a universal rule pool where the stratagems and the data sheets and all the things, they all come from the thing. Minus one AP, just call it tough. Then print the rule on the data sheet or stick it directly on the stratagem itself. When you pop this stratagem, your unit gains tough and reduces all incoming AP by one. This unit gains fleet and is eligible to advance and charge. Fleet. By popping this stratagem or this unit on this data sheet, this unit gains hit and run. It can always fall back, shoot and charge. They brought back all the weapon rules. They could bring back a bunch of other rules and add new rules, stick it in the back of the book. And that's where they pull all the rules from for all the data sheets and strats and things. And so it doesn't get too confusing for new players. Print the name like fleet with the rule next to it on your strat or on your data sheet. And then with experienced players, when you get good at the game, you can point and say, what does that do? Oh, that unit has tough and that unit has fleet. But Winters, I hear you ask, isn't there a danger of it being too locked in, too simplified? Well, thanks for asking, hypothetical person at the back. Well, if you write it on the data sheet, that gets rid of that thing. So, for example, this unit gains fleet and can advance and charge when the wow is called. Or, for example, what about those hundreds of different rules that reduce the incoming strength of an attack versus a toughness? Let's call that rule resilient and you could write it on there. This unit gains resilient only to shooting attacks. This unit gains resilient only in close combat. They simplified all the shooting abilities, lethal, sustained, twin linked and put them all in one thing and they could simplify all the other abilities as well and put them in one thing. It would make the game more accessible. It will speed up the game for tournament players. And it might even help balance the game better if all the rules are drawing from a single library or source sources. I mean, they've already got some sources there. I mean, stealth, lone operative, character. These are all keywords and we all know what they mean. 
Games Workshop had a bunch of good ideas in the past and sometimes they keep them, sometimes they change them, sometimes they bring them back like the universal special rules for the weapons. Sometimes they get rid of them completely like only one way to... Just because it was a good idea in the past for the last 30 years, it doesn't suddenly mean it's a bad idea now. It's still a good idea. However, there are some ideas that are just bad, which brings me on to the third change Warhammer 40k must make. Battle shock. Doesn't really do anything, does it? It's not very interactive. How many times have you chosen not to make the battle shock roll? Your unit's nowhere near an objective, so it doesn't matter if it fails a battle shock, and you're not going to spend any stratagems on it anyway because you don't have any CP, so it doesn't matter if you fail battle shock. That comes out all the time. And then on those occasions where you might lose your CP because you are battle shocked, you spend your VP to pass the battle shock, and then you get it anyway. I would make it more interactive if a unit is battle shocked. While it is battle shocked, minus one to their saving throws, including invulnerable saving throws. Minus one to saving throws. You put a token next to it so people can see it's battle shocked there, and then you're thinking, right, that you that is that's battle. So now I'm going to punish them because they've got minus one to their save. I'm going to shoot and shot. I'm going to hurt them. And minus one to all saving throws is pretty significant if you've only got a five up saving throw or a five up invulnerable save. And minus one to all saving throws is also pretty significant if you have a two up saving throw. Then Night Lord's Army, Chaos Knight Armies, Drakari Armies that really want to punish something that is battle shocked and all their stratagems and all their things are turned on when they attack that battle shock unit, then they're going to be really punishing those battle shock units. It's going to feel Night Lords feel Night Lordy again. We like Night Lords. Read the Night Lords trilogy from Aaron Dembski Bowden. 10 out of 10. Highly recommended. Must read. Or you could do something different. When a unit gets battle shocked, it must move six inches away, directly away from the closest enemy unit, not off the board edge. That's interactive. You force someone to lose a battle shock or they've lost battle shock and suddenly they've moved off an objective. Do that right at the start of the command phase. Put a movement in there at the command phase so they don't score that objective in the command phase. It's interactive. Something happens. Is a third idea when a unit gets battle shocked, its weapon skill and ballistic skill goes down by one. There's lots of things you can do, but I personally like the minus one to saving throws because then that sets up some fun interactions, some fun consequences. It means factions that want to force the battle shock because of narrative reasons are going to try and force that battle shock and going to really sting you when you are. It, it's nice. Anyway, those are the top three changes that I think Warhammer 40k should make. I'd like to have three different card decks write meow for more ways to play. Then there's 1,100 different names in here, but there isn't 1,100 different rules. There's about 100 different rules, just lots of different names. And then please, make Battle Shock shocking. Maybe we could look forward to those last two changes in the next edition. Maybe in this edition, we're going to get more ways to play. Who knows, but what do you think? What are your thoughts on the rules and my rules ideas? And what are your rights at rules ideas? Please comment in the comment section below. What do you want to see added? What do you want to see changed? What are the top three things that you think Warhammer needs right now? Thanks for listening. Happy Wargaming.